back, I was telling you about that NASA building that produced the vapor cloud and the BBC documentary. I do. That got censored down. Talking about that, yep. Right. I found some. I found some better ones. Both of that particular building and a couple other ones, including one in NASA's. I guess they're saying it's a rocket cooling system that they spray water on, but it produces a cloud vapor. And that cloud vapor can actually produce uh, thunderstorms. Oh, okay. Right. Um, I haven't I haven't really been keeping up on the news or, or what's going on, but oh, I, I I haven't been either. This is total just uh total yeah, research that you got me started on. Uh, down that down that rabbit hole a while back with uh, you and Dirty Water talking about harp and all ah, that. H double A R P. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that goes back a decade. Oh yes, no doubt it does. Like maybe more. I I, I forget. But um, the thing I see lots of without watching the news, just looking at um, Instagram and, and what I'm. Is all the uh, UFO sightings like right? they're everywhere, all day long? I, I mean, if you really spent your time looking at it, you'd have something new to look at every every twelve oh, no, hours, no doubt. But Mal, this stuff right here has me thinking on a bigger level. For the past couple of days, I've even reached out. I've talked to people um, offline once again to see their perception, and they kind of agree with me because I got to be honest. You know me, and right off the bat. Me being a Christian, I place my faith above all else. You know what I mean? However, on this one, on this particular issue, because these scientists in these little mini clips, like when I when I attach this to it later, you'll, it'll all make sense. Yeah. Uh, they bring up some good points, but I find myself in that musk atmosphere. Uh, I see the potential for it to help in places like on this map over here of the whole globe of Africa in starvation areas of drought. If they could create thunderstorms like they recently did in Dubai, I believe it was in 2015 or 2016, they created a lightning storm. Now, if they yeah, can actually figure out this. That, that rings a bell. Vaguely, I remember something about that. And it was known to people, wasn't it? It, it mm-hmm. wasn't something they were hiding. They were showing. It was on the news. Yeah, right. Okay. Yep. Okay. See, this is this is where I'm going with this. So. I see the potential of it can help humanity. Also, though, I see the weaponization of it, just like some other clips. See, I found out that the Central Intelligence Agency, one of the first primary missions that they had was weather manipulation. Yep. You get what I mean? Yep. So this could be potentially a great thing, and this could be potentially a highly dangerous thing. Let me put it like this. Now, I don't know... If this clip is 100% that I use as from the History Channel, but it could have been one of the conspiracy file things. I'm not too sure. It was like a three-minute clip that I got. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I found it interesting whenever they said that during, um, I forget which war it was. I want to say Vietnam. They actually used weather tech to cause flooding to flood out the enemy. And that got me thinking of the danger side of it. Yo, I've never heard that before, but but certainly when you see something like a tsunami, that, I mean, yeah. if you could control that, imagine what a weapon that could be. Right. You know, I mean, and this is the everybody wants to talk about green earth. They want to talk about clean energy. How is ma- weather manipulation exactly clean? They're talking about launching now. Granted, now granted, silver, uh, silver onyx the type of silver onyx that they're talking about is not necessarily harmful on a massive scale, but it has been rumored to be harmful to the ocean environment. Okay. So when they're launching these particles to protect us from atmosphere, from heat and all that other stuff, like you heard Bill Gates talking about, it turns out that's what Bill Gates and all those people were talking about was launching. And I forget how to say it exactly uh, because of the chemical compound but it's silver monoxide or something like that. They, they launch it. It's a particle and they launch it into the atmosphere. And they're saying that if they launch enough of it, it will cause a layer of protection from the sun. Protect you know, is, that, is, is that something to do with what people call chemtrails and stuff? Like It's um, along the same lines of research. That's included in it too. Right. Um, 
I did come across a pilot's mail that said that a lot of the conspiracy theories about chemtrails are false. However, I came across some environmentalists, however, that brought us some interesting things by saying that jets are used. The problem is the amount of travel that's going on into the airways. It's not necessarily that the water that they're producing, because yes, it's water that they're producing and they're massive amounts of gallons on a plane. Yep. But when you multiply the amounts of planes and air traffic, really? and the release of these gases with the water, now where is that going? That's staying into the clouds, and then that's getting rained on, and that's coming back onto the ground. Right. That's the environmental issue that people are often talking about. Yeah. Do you get well, what I'm I, saying? I can remember we must be going back, well, to the beginning of, of COVID. Remember when all the – planes were grounded right. i forget who it was I, i'm tempted to say maybe it was dino i could be wrong though I, mm. I could be wrong someone said oh check out this site and it'll show you how many planes are currently in the air you're talking while, while all the planes are grounded and we're talking far many more than you could possibly count mm -hmm. like the map just had dots everywhere and the trails are being released into the um into the clouds see the issue is this like it boils down to population usage of the devices okay that's to me that's ultimately where the argument withstands because you have the commercialized aspect of it they're saying look this is a natural thing it's h2o that we're releasing that's vapor that we're releasing into the clouds, right? But what the environmentalists are saying is the amount of air traffic for commercial use, not even including government use, but the amount of air traffic alone and the releases of it is the issue. Well, well, that's that's why I bring up maybe it wasn't Dino, but whoever it was that said, look at this site, it'll show you all the traffic in the air. While planes were grounded, I couldn't fly to to America at that time. We mm -hmm. we grounded all our flights. The amount of stuff, cargo and mail and that, it was just unbelievable. So you think, how much must there be on a normal day when the normal citizen can fly to wherever they want and how many flights that takes? I mean, uh, and how many don't we know about? Do you oh, get what really? I'm saying? It and and I get that. Right? And I get all of that. You get what I'm saying? Ultimately, that's something that the global community would have to come together and say, look, maybe we don't need to fly as much. Maybe we don't need it. To, but that's going to go with everybody pushing for all of these different green gas vehicles. But you know what? Here's the thing. You need some type of gas and some type of chemical compounds to power all of this stuff. In fact, the batteries and the minerals that they mine for uh, that power these green energy cars are extremely toxic. They don't even know. Environmentalists, uh, scientists right now don't know what to do with the vehicles once they're no longer good because they're highly toxic for the environment. Now, now I'm not saying this is correct. This is just, I, I just put in how many aeroplanes are in the sky right now, right? Mm. It says, depending on the time of day, or time of year, there could be anywhere from 8,000 to 20,000 planes mid-flight at any given moment, according to Flight Radar 24, which keeps track of flights in real time. Mm. 8,000 to 20,000. I mean, it's the same thing as we talk about, um, I guess, an environmental person. Isn't it supposed would... to be something like, uh, like, something like six... Um... 600 gallons each plane produces of water vapor or something? I, I have no idea. I, I've never... I mean, and that's the thing. I'm not that big in a chemtrail, so I was hoping that we would get people listening in that could chime in on that because I'm not that smart about that area yet. I'm just now starting to look into all this. Um, the more aspect of it that I was interested in is the potential that it could actually harm us and could be beneficial to us. It's like a, it's like the um, ultimate ego check. I'm you listening, mate. I'm just, I'll be moving away from the camera, but I can. You're hear fine. You. I'm gonna go to light this up. Please keep going. I won't be thirty 
Do we have anybody in here yet? Yeah, uh, hold on. We have five viewers. Okay. <clears throat> so like I was saying, Mal, um, it's almost like how do we know for sure that the, the people manufacturing it aren't going to develop the God complex and misuse the tech? It's kind of like I trust Musk but I don't necessarily trust the people investing in Elon Musk's uh, company ideas because I don't know what the people investing long-term plans are for the technology. Hello to anyone that's still, um, still watching one. Uh, bear with us real quick. Mel had to go do something. I haven't seen anybody type anything yet. So but that's the uh, topic of the conversation is environmental tech and we still got a lot more to go into um on it hey there you are yes right i could hear you if i go away from the camera i could still oh no it's fine it's just how i am you know um, but see, and that's the thing is how do we know that the people investing in it, you know, I'll give you an idea. Take Big Bang Theory, the show me and my wife watch often. Yep. They uh, did some research and the military was interested in the technology they were developing and they were concerned about the same thing. And the military guy told them, that's easy for you. Don't be concerned about it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's my thing is as an inventor, as an artist, you can have the best attention behind something and have potential to help somebody, but that's not gonna stop somebody from trying to manipulate. And here's the other thing, all this weather manipulation that they're doing in the atmosphere is already changing our atmosphere. I actually think that is, but that could be potentially why we're seeing so many different weather patterns that they're saying are unusual. Well, isn't that funny? I was just gonna, I was gonna say to you, um, officially here, summer starts, December 1st. Mm -hmm. Now, now when I was a kid, my birthday is November 18th. By, <laughs> by November 18th, when I was a kid, it was mm -hmm. always hot. Now, anyone who's lived 40 years plus can see right. that, that, that that has changed. Like on November 18th now, you, you might be wearing coats and jackets. Mm -hmm. uh, the weather definitely, definitely, like it was the end of October that we had that massive, the, all the damage I showed you. Oh, yeah, done. not too long ago. True. Yeah. So all you've got to be is old enough to have seen enough summers arrive. And <coughs> any, anyone can see that. But, but funnily enough, it was low key who right. I was talking to on his stream recently. And I, I said, oh, how, how's winter for you? Because mayhem sends me pictures of snow and uh, oh i mean and and that's the thing like today check where i'm at we're supposed to be in uh and we were in the 60s today uh by wednesday or thursday we have another cold front moving in well 60s a pretty nice day isn't it mike it is but keep in mind in just a couple days in two or three days we're having another cold front we just got right one. yeah well I was just about to say to you, uh, I thought as I was driving around, because you see the weather go from, you know, here I am in shorts and short sleeves and that, mm -hmm. and then suddenly it's very dark, the wind is cold, not freezing. I don't mean it's freezing cold, but you wouldn't call it a nice summer day. Mm -hmm. And I, I do live in a part of Australia. They say our weather is schizophrenic, you right. know. It, That's and Oklahoma, is, where I live at. It's the bipolar section of North America. Yeah, well, well. So I, I'm not speaking for all of Australia. Clearly, if you're up it, up north, I'm sure you know it, it's hot still. But um, at least where I live, and I don't think you can be much closer to the South Pole without being in either New Zealand or Tasmania. Um. Like you can see a, a real difference in, in the weather. Oh, yeah. So I would expect a month from now, uh, perhaps I won't be wearing short sleeves and that. You know me when it's cold, I'm whinging about my sore back and the the weather really affects me. It's cold weather. I 
don't deal with very well. Oh, I don't, I don't blame you one bit. I don't blame you one bit. Um, but see, and Mal, and that's the other thing is some of these machines um, that they're talking about. It's really odd to me, and I, I can see where people are saying that conspiracy people are taking long leaps. Like you take the rocket cooling system, right? The rocket cooling system itself is it. What's up, G Day? How you doing? The rocket G'day. cooling system. G'day. Uh, that's how we say hello, Mike. Good day. Oh, okay. It's short for good day. G'day. I got gotcha. you. Good day, Mike. <laughs> um, that that rocket cooling system. They're saying a lot of people are jumping into conspiracies about because it's just the way they cool it off in the amount of vapor that it produces. But I'm looking at it from the from like I said from the aspect of it. And if they're already weather manipulation tech, uh, experimenting with lightning, creating lightning and thunderstorms and rain and all that other stuff. Uh, China, they said in the early 2020s, actually tried to solve their drought problem by using artificial snow. It backfired and they flooded in a major way. Right. With that said, they recently announced that here pretty soon. And they said that they're hoping to be the first country in the world that be able to control the weather. And the the satellite that they're planning to launch is going to be named the River in the Sky. Yeah. Now, where did I read that? The River in the Sky. Was it something you sent me? It could have been. Uh, well, I've recently read that, the River in the Sky. Um, now, where do you start? <coughs> I, I, if I were in charge of the world, and I never will be, mm -hmm. so we need not worry, I would annihilate China. Mm -hmm. And for anyone that do doesn't, well, I know there's plenty of innocent people there. I, 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 I like panda bears. I, I don't want to hurt panda bears. It's I not. Don't... It's not the country you need to look at. It's the rulers. What's going to happen? Well, I mean, right, I'm trying to. Countries uh, let those people be rulers, and they've mismanaged their environment for a very, very long time. They, they have. The Olympics, uh, the Olympic Committee has even said what they're doing to the environment right now for the Winter Olympics, that region of China, their scientists are extremely worried right now about the long-term damage it's going to cause environmentally to that area. If I'd been... If I'd been looking at, and look, it's hard It's hard to put yourself in the shoes of someone that lived 100 years ago. They have a whole different frame of reference. But I would not have been half as concerned about Germany as I currently am today about China. You don't, <laughs> you don't want China to, to have control of anything. Well, okay. I mean, because that's just it. If they can control the weather, they can manipulate the weather to cause floods. They can manipulate wave technology already right now in your own country, Mal. Granted, it's for good purposes, such as surfing and wave pools and manipulation of waves and reefs. I recently got an email, mate, asking me, um, do I want to invest? They had this picture of what? It was from that's Pi probably the Pi. one I'm talking about. It's a massive system that can uh, can make up. They say that if they can release it to the public, it's in it Sydney. will be the largest wave on the face of the earth known to man. Well, well, this what I'm talking about from from miles above the ground. It looks like a very big swimming pool, but what it is, is yes, with the see bit with the concrete barriers around it. No, no, there was no concrete. It was all sand. It looked like sand at one end, sand at the other, and the idea is you surf from this end to that end. It's all <laughs> artificial. And and the, the email I received was saying, do you want to invest in this? This is mm -hmm. going to be a worldwide attraction. Oh, it is. It, it looked like a miniature ocean. That's going to be included in this, what we're doing right now. Yeah. It's going to be included in what we're doing right now. Um because I was looking into the ocean and how all this stuff affects the ocean water, you know, because to me, I've always been more fascinated in the ocean life and jungles and woods. And I have a lot of other things, you know what I mean? So I never knew this was a thing either. So I'm including it in it as well. Did you ever know that the ocean can form a chessboard? No, I've never. And if heard. it does, they say to get it out of the water immediately. What do you mean it can form a chessboard? I mean what? the ocean pattern of the wave, and it happens in France. 
it forms a square pattern like a chessboard. I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. And it gets, it's like a suction thing. I'll tell it's, you what I, I'll tell you what I am a hundred percent sure of. It doesn't matter how silly I sound because people who would argue with me sound even <laughs> sillier to me. Mm -hmm. You know how we tag great white sharks so we can track yes. their movements and that? There was one somewhere off the coast of Australia. I'm not sure if it was uh, Queensland or New South Wales or WA. I forget where it was. But they had a tracker on this thing. And suddenly its temperature, where, where it was in the ocean, it was a certain temperature. Suddenly the temperature went way up. And this thing went and sunk to a depth of the ocean that we could no longer track it, which meant something it was trying to get colder. It. Something grabbed this thing and took it down. Mm -hmm. Now, all that could be is a megalodon. Yes. For the ocean life that the ocean life that they're still discovering. I mean, that's the thing that fascinates me about the ocean is the deaths of it. They say we've only explored, what is it? Um, I actually forget about the percentage. 5%. Yeah, 5% of the ocean. Yes. So we have alien life form right there in the water, undoubtedly. Definitely. Meaning and that then, we don't have it discovered yet. I use this analogy a lot. If someone suspected me of kidnapping and killing children, they wouldn't search 5% of my house and say, all clear, nothing to see here. Right. <laughs> Right, so, right. So how we talk about the megalodon well, is... Well, see, extinct. and that goes... And see, Mal, that goes with this other thing, is if they've been around this whole time, is it possible that them messing with the weather and weather manipulation technology that they've been doing has been messing with the ocean, been messing with the air, warming up the waters, warming up the air to the point to where all these animals are starting to travel and come to other areas and seeking uh, comfort? It makes sense. I mean, it seems logical. At, at its deepest, the, the ocean is six miles deep. Right. There's a pyramid six miles down <coughs> on the ocean floor. You've seen all those places where clearly there's things underwater now that were once above water because mm -hmm. there's roads and structures and stuff. Oh, so yeah. I, I understand what was up is now is down and things... Go back I mean, to the and that's the, that's the spiritual side of me. Like, I always go back to, we shouldn't play God, but at the same time, at the same time, I believe God gave people unique abilities to be able to solve problems, such as the fact that I can't wake up and perform brain surgery. I've never had that thought process. Where I me and you lose each other is when, when no, you... No, I know. I know we when do. When you say God, I feel like you're talking about a person or a human with magical powers. No, if I mean, I say God. I'm talking about everything. Well, the universe. In a way, in a way, Mal. Like I said, we've gone through this before. When I say Alpha and Omega, creator of the universe, I'm talking about the the person that created uh, everything. Not a person, mate. And if it were, if it were a singular, a monoth monotheous type thing, it would be what you'd call an alien, because mm. it's not an Earthling. So the, the well, no doubt. I mean, he created all life forms. So he, he, he. I know, I know. I told you that's just how I view. That's oh, I how know, I view. And I'm not mocking you for one minute. I'm not. I'm just saying it's like we we've got two def different definitions of the no. Same I know, group. I know. I mean, but back to the lecture at hand. The principle behind what I was saying is even if you look at it, you can't put this type of technology behind these billionaires and expect good results. I just don't see that as a realistic thing. All these people are pushing for a green earth. I mean, honestly, like I just told you earlier, these cars they want to manufacture that Biden wants on the road, those are so hazardous and so toxic that they don't know what to do with them to get rid of them. What cars are we, are we talking about? We're talking about the uh, green energy cars, the green efficient Electric cars. Is that electric cars? Yes, electric cars. Okay. Those batteries that they use are so toxic Lithium. that they don't know what to do with them to get rid of them. And it's the same. See, we don't have nuclear power here in Australia. And lots of people say, oh, hey, that, that's the way to go. Mm. Well, like when you create methamphetamine, for every pound of meth you produce, you have five pounds of toxic waste. Mm -hmm. So what do you want to do with that? 
your nuclear energy, you've got to bury it somewhere. Mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's similar. But once to you like, bury it, it's going to go back into the soil. Of course. And, and then it's going to harm the, and harm the environment. And just like the catacombs of, is it France? The catacombs, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Was it France? They run it was out France of room. Where they have the cities underneath where the bodies yeah. and all that. Yeah. So, so they ran out of room to bury people. So they started using the people's bones as building material. Now, you don't have to look <coughs> too far into the future before everywhere you step, there'll be a person somewhere beneath your feet. I mean, honestly, it's not that uncommon. It's more cities than France, though, so too. Uh, Sacramento, which the word means sacred, yeah. um, was Sacramento. cast on fire, and it's built in the area to where if you watch, like, Ghost Adventures, there's, that's one of the best shows that did it. And you can see the two different doorways above you from the different times it flooded, and they didn't know what to do with the bodies and everything, so they just built on top of it. Now, eventually, that all we've got to do, and look, my country that is roughly the same size as yours has 10% of the people. So you are in a more dire situation than me. It used to blow my mind to watch Stoner drive from Sacramento to LA and for four hours he'd be passing wilderness. And I used to think you have 40 million people. Like mm -hmm. it's very eye opening to me. He drove yeah. for four hours through mountains and open land and all this. And I sit and I think, how's that possible? I mean, we have less than 30 million people in this entire country. We have twice as many kangaroos as people. And people in your country think we ride kangaroos to school. <laughs> I've had people, I've had people say, "Go outside and show us a kangaroo." Like as if they're like on the side of the road, as if yeah. they're hopping down the street. And I understand the perception. I, I get it. Mm. I, I I get why you'd think that, but it's very. I guess until you've been somewhere, you you just don't know. Uh, you you have your perception. How many Americans do I talk to that say, "Oh, we're scared of spiders, snakes, and crocodiles"? And it's like, hey, I've caught huntsmen's live on mm -hmm. camera and, and had girls that catch snakes go, "Oh my God, be careful!" It's like, be what? Well, I mean, and honestly, that's how, In as far as the other, if it's Americans you're talking about, um, our perception is like that even with each other. Like when I first moved from Oklahoma to California in high school, they legit asked me if people still lived in teepees out here, like Native Americans still lived in teepees. You See, know what I mean? I, I kind of view America similar to Europe in mm -hmm. that. I was astounded to learn what there's 200 different languages in, in Europe. It, America is very similar with your 50 states. It's like 50 different countries in one place. We're a melting pot. That's why That's why I can hear it's you disturbing. Mind. Right. I mean, and honestly, I wasn't trying to get in the, uh, I got to rein it back in the topic here in a minute, Matt, when you get back. But that's what's disturbing about what's going on with my country right now is growing up our country represented freedom and unity it was a melting pot of many different cultures uh, regardless of how they came about um, in this country this country was known as a melting pot of many different cultures all many different languages and shapes and forms and walks of life all within one nation and now everybody is so divided that no matter everybody's uh, afraid to express how they feel about things because everybody's just so divided. That's what's disturbing about it to me. G Day, are you still with us, bro? Another where I'm wrong there 
in that same thing. My perception of America, the way many Americans view, oh, I wouldn't go to Australia, the spiders, the snakes, mm-hmm. etc. I, I I have that feeling about guns. Like <laughs> I, I, I do. See how you laugh, mate. We have a story here. My friend, that guy who got shot. He was a he was a baseball player, mm-hmm. and, and he, he he was Australian. He went to America, and he was just jogging. He was going for a jog, and the kids that shot him, whoever fired the gun, was just doing that to prove something to the others. I, they shot and him, I, and I understand it. that, but I'll tell you this: an armed society is a polite society. Yeah, well, and, I've heard that said many a time, and I can see the point. I, can. I mean, honestly, Mel, I'll put it like this. I'll give you a better scenario. Not too long ago, and I want to say it was my state, but it could have been Texas, one of the two. But at any rate, somebody was proceeding to rape a woman, right, in broad daylight outside of a gas station. A good Samaritan with a gun placed the person under citizen's arrest until the cops got there. Now, I understand, and he can do that because he's armed. Right. So I I totally, totally understand that. And um, I I wouldn't argue. I I wouldn't. We've gone too far one way. I feel that you guys have gone too far the other. I mean, and I get what you're saying. I'm not going to – none of us that support guns – are going to sit here and tell you logically that everybody with a gun is a good person. But I'll tell you this majority of gun owners are good attentions behind them and uh, wouldn't hurt somebody unless they were in harm's way or protecting somebody. Oh, and and sure I right. would prefer people to have guns than without them. Well, I can totally understand that. I really can. You know, I, I, I wouldn't argue with you. All, all I'd say to you is as much as I'd like to have a gun, I don't want to shoot anyone. I, right. I, I don't. But as much as I'd like to have the right to have a gun, I'm glad all the other idiots that live in this street don't have that right. Mm-hmm. I, like, like a license to drive a car, I'd prefer you had to do something to earn that's well, true. I mean, and honestly, these politicians right now, they're working on House bills right now um, to actually eliminate the guns to the point of caliber size. I want to say being um, eight millimeter, I believe I read is going to build it's going to barrier It's going to basically boil down to the millimeter size and caliber size, as well as they're going to make it harder for people to get gun ammunition such as for fireworks um, as well for gun manufacturing and bullets and such. So <clears throat> if that passes, that essentially went unarmed a lot of people. Well, in a country that has had so many school shootings, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it's you taken know, so long. Because of the conspiracy theories that I actually have wondered about, if there's some truth in it if politicians aren't behind some of these and setting them up to make it easier for gun control. Well, I'll tell you one thing COVID's done is it slowed down school shootings. Has it, has it not in the last two years, right after COVID restrictions were lifted, there was a school shooting that was with an African American teenager who was arrested and let go and then had a party afterwards. I never even heard about that. Exactly. Hardly nobody did. Whereas usually, be it Columbine or or whatever, whichever, usually a school shooting is major news that unless you were deaf and blind, mm-hmm. you couldn't avoid hearing about it. Oh, but, I mean, and me and my wife are, like I told you before, I know we're on different spiritual backgrounds, but we were, we were reading and uh, we got to a part and we were talking about... Uh, stuff similar to that and about how it's getting to the point in society right now to where how do you how could you tell the difference between a stripper and a prostitute you remember back in when we were younger you could tell the difference between a hooker a stripper 
and a regular woman. You know what I mean? Even if the woman wanted to get some the way she dressed, right? You could still tell the difference. But now, now you have mothers and daughters walking around together looking like looking like strippers or hookers and feeling like they're cute for doing it. We're getting to a point in society right now to where you might as well just have sex in the street. I mean, in San Francisco, they're literally taking dumps on the city street. Yeah. I mean, honestly, we're at that point. We're at that point in society. And then we're going back to, uh, cause I'm running out of time. We're going back to the point of this episode. Um, we're now they have these rich people basically trying to create artificial intelligence to what of the tech they have looks like a gun Mal, and it's like a bunch of pistons um, that fires away you know what i mean to be able to control the weather this stuff is all different types of tech that you're going to see at the end of this like when i put it together and release it and on top of and on top of that you already have them doing mind control too. That's something else that um, I found a Indian news station uh, ran a news article that was talking about a recent experiment that China did that they're saying is an experiment of massive mind control on their population, on a certain population. You know what I mean? So now we're dealing with warfare, both in germ technology, biotechnology, weather manipulation, and mental manipulation. This is the era of World War III we're fixing to get into. Yeah, no doubt. This is where we've let ourselves, as a global society, lose point of focus. Whatever you want to believe in, whatever you want to do, in whatever walk of life you are, it matters not. We've let ourselves go astray to the point to where we haven't noticed that these world leaders are doing this stuff globally. Riddle me this, just such as this meme I posted earlier said, how is it they could freeze bank accounts for all kinds of crimes, but yet pedophiles yes. don't get frozen? Isn't it incredible? This I mean, is the point of society to where we're at. Do you get what I'm saying? So I'm I'm telling people now, you better wake up and pay attention to what these scientists are really doing. Because not only are they messing with our weather, which is going to, I guarantee you, is going to have long-term effects. And I'm going to prove that with this bonus features I'm about to attach to this at the end of this. Not only are they doing that, messing with our weather, putting chemicals into all kinds of things. They're playing God with artificial intelligence now. They're messing with people's heads and boasting about it. And we have politicians. I'll never forget it last year, that one politician in New York, in her campaign speech when he said citizens, or she said citizens, you need to put down your crosses and pick up your COVID crosses and be my disciples. I said, what more do you need to know about what time period of world history we're getting ready to go into? It's frightening. You get what I mean? Because yeah. you still don't hear people talking about that one that much. I mean, honestly, I covered so much news over the past couple of years. I almost had a mental breakdown not too long ago. Yep. Do you get what I mean? Um, this stuff what we're getting ready to go into is not good. It's poisonous and it's toxic on every single level from emotional to mental, to our health and to our well being. Nobody's paying attention to it because they're too distracted by everything that's going on. Do you get what I mean? Very true. Yeah. I mean, I know it's a sad reality. But that's the reality that we're going into. And that's why I tell people so much recently, whatever you whatever you might believe in, whatever stuff that you like to do, whether it be your family, whether it be your friends, whether it be your faith, whatever it is, find your happiness. Because when I said in my last episode, Mal, I looked at the camera and I said, because I could tell you this, things aren't looking good. Did I lie? Fuck no. No, of course not. 
We get what I mean? Uh, we have China getting ready to move in on every single different direction. Japan just now announced that they're getting ready to uh, be ready for whatever global conflict will happen. You have Russia getting ready to move into Ukraine. You have uh, China scrambling out NATO ships. You have cyber warfare going on left and where, uh, left and right. You have all of this uh, pedophilia propaganda, LGBT propaganda, trans propaganda, teachers turning against students and teachers turning against parents. Teacher, uh, the amount of parents getting arrested for assaults against kids right now is a phenomenal to me. Um, it's insanity what's going on. There's no, there's, no other, there's no other word to describe it, man. If, if you're not a Christian, I go to sin and, and all kinds of other words. But because you're not, the only word that I could use to describe it is we've let ourselves get distracted by the technology and by all these all these devices and all this other stuff to the point to where we've allowed society to get to this point. I mean, well, now they, they're, they're doing other stuff too. Remember not too long ago when we were growing up, they were talking about cloning. Yep. and cloning people and with well, the sheeps right. and all that you get yeah, what i'm right. saying uh yeah. they, i don't hear them talking about that too often anymore either mm-hmm. you get what i'm saying you hear all these rich people talking about oh we'll have the technology to be able to go to other planets well do you think that these rich people are going to let us average people go to these other planets no you're not going <laughs> to be able to afford it yeah no They want to say the earth is heating up and we got to find life on other planets and what planets are sustainable for life. They're not talking about us. They're talking about the bankers and the politicians and the royalty people and the oil tycoons. They're not talking about us. That's the reality. I've got to assume you, you wouldn't advise your son to have children. No, I mean, I, I believe in a sanctity of human life. So I believe that human life is crucial to continue no matter what until in my belief system until my God comes back. You get what I mean? Uh, so I'm not going to say that. What I'm saying is we got to continue to educate our children into the principles that we were brought up with. So I'm bringing my kids. I'm raising my sons and my daughter in my faith and I'm raising them to what I believe and what's right. I control what they watch on TV. We control how much uh, they're allowed to be on their tablets and devices. You know what I mean? We don't really allow them to go to that many places. So we control what they're doing majority of the time. We're very proactive in them. And that's the only way to combat this type of stuff. They're trying to they're trying to destroy the nuclear family for a reason, Mal. I guess where we differ so much is that if anyone's waiting for a God to come back, mm-hmm. I, I look at World War II and, and ask, why didn't he come back then? Was that not horrific enough? Well, what, what, what I mean, you... I can't answer. I can't answer. That's a loaded question I can't answer. And we both know that. Well, is it loaded or is it just a question? Because uh, there's been plenty of horrific things happen. We well, because it depends on how it really depends on how you look at it, because I go with the fact that we have the ability to live in flesh or the ability to live for God. Do you get what I mean? A lot of people choose to live in the flesh. The so, flesh is power tripping. The flesh is goes hand in hand with war. So the Genghis Khan's victims or the victims of World War II, were they doing something wrong? What why weren't they saved? I mean, I can't I you know, I can't answer that either. No one can. And, and when I drive past the trailer with the word Jesus saves written on it and I look at it and scoff. No, I mean he does he he saves in many different ways. I believe if more people actually were active in whatever phase that they had, including mine, I do believe a lot of the issues would go away. But sadly, in my faith, it says in these times that we're getting ready to go into, it describes exactly what I just said earlier. It said that fathers will turn against sons. Mothers will turn against daughters. People will commit sodomy. There will be filth in the street. Nations will rise against nations. Kingdoms will rise against kingdoms. There will be disease. 
There will be famine. There will be we earthquakes. Have we have all that. Where is he? Do you get what I'm saying? There's more to come. Do you so, get what I mean? There's even worse stuff to come. So how bad does it have to get before you say you God has failed? I will never say he's failed. Well, there's our difference, because I'll declare that already. And it doesn't mean we have to be enemies or have an argument. No, that's what I was, you know, ironically, before before I have to end this, um, I just had a conversation where I brought up Enoch uh, just the other night at work. I was talking to a younger server. You know what I mean? I actually, I don't know his age. And he told me his feelings. I'm not going to go public about that. He told me that his feelings about whatever, you know? And I said, you know what? I have a buddy of mine that said that he's not really an atheist, but he's kind of an atheist. And we, we, we debate sometimes in a friendly way. But ultimately, what I'm trying to show people is, and like I told him, he knows how strongly I believe in my God. He knows how strongly my faith is. And he knows I believe in living by example. You get what I mean? And I was talking about you. And I said, that's how, that's how I operate. I live by example because I don't believe that we should have to Bible thump people, okay, to get our message across. In fact, I believe far too many of us have been doing that, and that's the wrong way to go about to be able to reach people. I don't believe I'm going to be able to reach you or reach anybody I know. And I'm talking about my close friends. Let's be honest. In my walk of life I've had before I was a Christian, was not the best of life. So the people I know, I'm not going to be able to approach them in that sense. Do you get what I mean? So I approach everybody the same way I'd want to be approached, which is me being myself. With that being said, I'm always going to defend my God. And I'm always going to defend my beliefs. And like I said, nothing will ever change my beliefs. I am willing to go to the point to where somebody can have a gun to my head and say, do you still believe in your God? And I'm still going to say yes, because so, that's how strongly I believe in them. Well, uh, I'm just asking out of interest, at what, what point do you declare that brainwashed? Because if you've got an omnipotent God that you believe and trust in and everything mm -hmm. around you is falling apart and turning to shit and you believe he's... Everything around me can go bad, but yet somehow now, Somehow, I am okay, and my family's okay. Even that, whenever we're not okay, we're still okay. Do you get what I'm saying? And that's where my faith comes in. Okay. Well, well, yeah. In a sense, I, I can I can understand it, but I, I would expect you to be able to understand when I say this God you speak of to my mind, is an utter failure. I mean, what has he succeeded in? What ha what what part of what he fucking did is good? I, I don't get well, it. As long as I'm all right, he's good? I mean, and that's where me and you are always going to have that line in the stand because I've known you for how many years now, Mal? You knew four, me before five. I was a Christian even. Yeah, we're talking four or five years. You know? You knew you you first met me when I still wasn't a Christian. Yep. You know what I mean? So I and I can understand that. But I'm still but I'm still gonna stay strong. I and, and I'm still and gonna stay know, strong in my you know, for as long as as long as that works for you, I say well done. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is I'm a little jealous over here as those explanations <laughs> don't work for me. I, right. I, I, and I get that. And I think that a lot of that boils down to the way I view things in a way you view things, because I'm going to view things from a spiritual sense. For instance, I can have a bad day at work and everything and everything be tense around me. The whole environment be completely tense and me be on the verge of feeling like whatever, like an, an anxiety attack or whatever. You know what I mean? And I'll start praying or slightly singing to him in, in my head or whatever right and i start feeling better and whatever's going on don't affect me because i'm at peace in my mind and that's how that's that's an example of how i view things do you but get what i mean someone someone 
in your predicament talks about yoga mm -hmm. and that helps them sure someone else talks about heroin nah heroin <laughs> well, 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 well i don't agree I, i'm not advising anyone to do heroin someone survives their day by saying hey at the end of the day i can do this and all will be better right and i mean all it i'm saying mean is good it all, doesn't all, mean all i'm right. saying is to me we're probably never going to agree on that concept no, but right. to get back because i only got like five minutes left mal sure. but uh to get back to the point right <clears throat> take this bottle of water right and when i say playing god take it as the crater in the sky then take it as the thing that you view it these people have no right to mess with okay so you want to believe in mother nature they have no right to mess with mother nature they have no right to mess with god's creation they have no right to play with this stuff and the, and that's just the way i that's just the way i view it because any any way they do it could be potentially harmful long term or the investors have wrong things towards it and i believe that that's going to be harmful towards our kids and harmful towards us you get what i mean yep so unfortunately in this realm we live in it seems that god gold oil and drugs things that are worth money <clears throat> you know do you know who the god of this world is biblically satan right so you keep saying why is this happening why is that happening and i tell you that people have the ability to come to christ or live in the flesh. When you live in the flesh, you're walking with Satan, who's a god of the god of this earth. So, so I say to to you, and, and not to start an argument, I say, where did this Satan character come from? Well, we both know that that who would be him? who taught him. We, we know both who know that be. that would be the fallen angel. No, we know that would be God. That created Lucifer mm -hmm. and then decided to banish him this way. Mm -hmm. And he decided to do to act upon because we're getting we've very done this. Now. We've done this, we've done this discussion on our show, Mal, already. So that omnipotent god of yours, mate, I have a few questions for. <laughs> I mean, I really do. I'd love to interrogate him. I know, and I and I know, and you know that I pray for you all the time. I do. Well, <laughs> Thank you for that, Mike. But I, I urge you not to waste your time. Okay. No, you can't say you can't say that because you're like family to me, man. You're like you're one of the few people no, that I, I know that I you could fly to America and know that you can knock on my door and be like, "Hey, I'm hey, over I'm in your cool. state." <laughs> I'll be coming to America, mate. I real I have a friend I went to school with who knows how terrified I am of flying. Mm -hmm. um, so we haven't made an exact date yet but but for all intents and purposes i could buy the ticket tomorrow right right uh, and there's nothing hold me back now um not that i i, I wish tama was still here i really do but oh now, yeah i got something to tell you whenever we kill this later um uh, that happened today but um tama it just reminded me of that but remember let me let me just say this to our audience and I hope you can agree with me on this. Me and you may not agree on spiritual things, but I'm sure we could agree on this. I think we agree upon much more than we disagree upon. No, we definitely do. We've proven that. We've proven that. But um, we need to hold and realize what the teacher unions are pushing. You know what I mean? What the Department of Education is pushing. What the Department of Health the scientists and what they're really doing don't just read like this little label in the bowl that they have read that little fine print around the bottle that That's little fine print part. yeah to see what's really going on yeah, the, do you get the, what i mean the important parts written so you need a magnifying glass to, to see it <laughs> exactly Nonsense. i mean why do you think these bills are so ungodly like long just stacks of paper you know what i mean do you really think they're reading all that of course not 
Hell no, they're not reading it. They're just signing. I know it. I'm not. I know I'm not. I do see some people when I'm in the shopping center reading because you know <laughs> I, I do see them doing that, but I, I don't think most people I've never I've never needed glasses or anything, but gee, I reckon within the next couple of years I will. Because I, my I, I have I normally wear reading glasses, honestly, I do. Yeah, well, I, I don't think I'm far off needing them too, because I sometimes I have to you know, blink and focus my eyes. They don't just do it the way they used to. So, you know, at 47, mate, most people I, I went to school with do have reading glasses. I, I think the majority of them do now. No um, doubt. No doubt. Uh, I mean, and I, and I hope, and I hope with this episode, when I put it all together for everybody that's watching, um, any, anybody, cause I'm hoping that you'll continue the stream so that I could do my thing afterwards or whatever. Or leave it I'll up. Lend so it. It. I'll lend it, but I'll leave it up. That that's the same thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, just remember, just just remember that. Hold our know what's really going on and ask questions about what's really going on. That's yeah. the only way we're gonna stop what's 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 gonna happen, and that's why I'm gonna put together this episode the way I am. It's gonna be the bonus features what I mentioned with the artificial reefs and waves. Um, with the artificial rain that created snow, uh, the actual debunking of conspiracy theories and the actual truth of the matter, uh, the pros of it, the potential uh, cons of it. And by the way, in true Mice Random Thoughts special uh, style, I added a bonus feature part of it that's going to go into the history of the CIA when they were formed, what they were doing. Um, as well as MI5 and what they were doing. And can we um, reiterate while you're on that topic, the first time the terms conspiracy and theorist were used together in a sentence was to describe the people that did not believe the official report of the JFK assassination. When people saw his head go back and to the left, mm. back and to the left, which suggests that shot come from somewhere two o'clock-ish on his right, when we said, no, 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 the only guy that fired any shots was behind him, the people that said, hold on, that's anti-physics. Right. If you're shot from behind, your head doesn't go back and to the left. They were the people to be called conspiracy theorists. So what is a conspiracy theorist? Someone that doesn't believe the official bullshit narrative when they right. see a man's head go back and to the left, back and to the left, and someone says the only shots that were fired come from behind him. Mm. Well, hold on a minute. That would make his head go forward and to the, you know, left, forward to the left. Right. But now, mean, that's, something, that's something that we might have to go into, uh, um, go into eventually because that's like this episode is part of that idea that i had going into other areas other than politics and that's why i wanted to do the weather manipulation uh, there's stuff about harp that's going to be included in uh mind warfare and uh mind uh mental can manipulation is going to be included in it as well i'm um, going back to um, doing interesting projects such as what you were talking about the jfk thing i might uh depending like what i told you i'm toying with the idea uh, doing a special on dinosaurs as well, uh, both for my belief structure and yours. Yeah. <laughs> you get what I'm yeah. saying? Wow. Uh, all kinds of interesting ideas um, that I'm turning around, uh, uh, working with. I'm also working with the idea of possibly doing one on the Bermuda Triangle because I found something that finally figured it out on what it, what it really is. They finally actually figured out what causes it. Well, I'll be interested to hear about that. Yeah, really we're going to do one. That's we're going to do that one on that one as well. Clearly, a lot of unexplainable shit's gone on there, or at least unexplainable. Actually, it has to do with the weather. Yeah, well, clearly. Clearly, it does. It does. It does. They said that it's a, um, I forget the term. I have it written down for later for when I do the research on it. Um, but it's a certain term that they use, and it's a, weather pattern that occurs in certain environments and that's one of the environments that happens in and what happens is almost like a tornado effect 
yep. of how a tornado has suction going into it. Yeah. Only what? it happens in water, and instead of going into it, it spits everything out back into the air and like then a sucks it back down into it. Effect. Like yeah, a vortex going the yeah, up like and then back down water. into it. Yeah, I, I get it. Well, that's very interesting, Mike. We're, we've been an hour and five minutes, so... Um, right, I'll... and that's the thing. I had to keep in mind that the bonus features that we're going to attach to this itself is around an hour long. So as total as total is going to be two hours long. All right. Well, I'll kill this, mate. I'll get out there and do some more deliveries and stuff, and um, I'll send you a message when I get back. No doubt, man. I appreciate it. Good luck with your deliveries, and then give me a call just on a regular, man, just to, just to chit-chat with me and the wife and the kids. Will do, for sure. All right. Be safe, brother. All right? Thanks, Mike. Have a good night, mate. Always. Later. Later.